I have a new Lightroom workflow when I'm working with Topaz, Denoise AI, and Sharpen AI. I want to show that to you today, so stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, today I want to show you my new Lightroom uh, workflow when I'm working with Denoise and Sharpen AI. And the reason I came up with this new workflow is because I started working with linear profiles. If you've watched a couple of my last videos, uh, I've been dealing with... Uh, linear profiles and I really enjoy working with them, but I'm still getting the hang of using them. And sometimes I need to go back and retweak things a little bit. Now, once I leave Lightroom and go into Photoshop, that's a problem for me with my old workflow because I'd have to kind of scrap what I was doing in Photoshop, go back to Lightroom and make the necessary changes. And then I'd have to go back into Photoshop again. So I thought I got to come up with a better way of doing things. And today I want to show you the better way of doing things. Now I start off the same way I always do. And that is make sure in my detail section, I have the sharpening and the noise reduction turned off because I will be using Sharpen AI and Denoise AI to do that. And I always make sure I have my lens corrections turned on. But even if I forget with my new method, I don't have to really worry about that. And you'll see the reason why shortly here. And the other thing I do is always make my basic adjustments here. And I use no presence or clarity adjustments in Lightroom. And uh, now I'm working with linear profiles, so I always apply my linear profile for whichever camera I'm using. So all that's the same. Now here's where the change comes in. I right click on the image and instead of coming to edit in and going to Adobe Photoshop, now what I'm doing is going edit in and coming down to open as a smart object in Photoshop. So now it's gonna open up Photoshop and it will make this raw file a smart object. In other words, this raw file is embedded inside of a smart object. So I can go back and re-edit the raw file anytime I need to, which is very, very powerful, especially for me now when I, I'm still getting in the hang of working with linear profiles. And sometimes I need to go back and retweak. So this is very helpful for me. Now, most of Topaz software doesn't work so well as a smart object, but Topaz Denoise AI and Topaz Sharpen AI both do, which is a plus, and that's why I can incorporate this into my workflow. Now remember, this smart object has an embedded RAW file inside of it. So what I'm going to do next is come up here to Filter, come to Topaz Labs, and go and find Topaz Denoise AI. This image was shot at ISO 2000, so it's a pretty high ISO. I'm going to go ahead and use Topaz Denoise AI first, and I might end up using some Sharpen AI on it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do Denoise AI, and you should always do your noise reduction first, by the way. So we're going to fire up Topaz Denoise AI. Now, if you think this is going into Denoise AI as a raw file, it is not. It's, I'm pretty sure it's a PSD file. It's either a PSD file or a TIFF file. I'm pretty sure it is a PSD file. If anybody knows, please let us know in the comment section below. But it's a lossless file nonetheless. Now let's go ahead and noise reduce this. I'm going to start out with standard and check it out. Because again, it's ISO 2000. I'm going to run auto on it and see what kind of result I get. Let me zoom into 200%. I recommend that you really zoom in so you can really see the noise and give it a second to update. Now that's standard. That's an auto. I can still see noise in here. Now I could take the remove noise and bump this up and get rid of the noise. But let's go ahead and try low light. I usually start with standard and then I'll move to low light. And if I need more noise reduction, I may move into severe noise. But it, with an ISO 2000, severe noise will not be necessary. But in low light, and now let's click on auto, we can see we're getting a really nice noise reduction here. I may just bump this up. Maybe it's a four. Let's go to like a, a six, just a little extra there. And I may increase the uh, sharpness a little bit. Let's look at this B right here. No, actually, I'm going to leave it there because I it's just slightly soft, not bad. It's pretty sharp. I'll go ahead and run uh, Sharpen AI on this next, but I think I'm just going to leave it right here. I'm not going to mess with Recover Original Detail. I don't think I need to, and Color Noise Reduction has already been taken care of in uh, Lightroom. And by the way, I think I forgot to mention, uh, I shut the Noise Reduction off in Lightroom and uh, the Sharpening 
and I use the def- the default setting of 25 on color noise removal because I find that I get the best results when I do that. I don't think I mentioned that about the color noise reduction, but I want to mention it here. So I'm good. I think that everything looks good. All I need to do is click apply and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. And I'm doing this in real time. So you can see it really processes out really fast now. So now you can see I have a smart filter and it's Topaz Denoise AI. Now here's the really good part about this new workflow. If I need to retweak the raw file, I can double click on the smart object and that'll send me into Adobe Camera Raw. And then I can come and adjust any adjustments I want. If I forgot to uh, turn on uh, remove chromatic aberrations or enable uh, profile corrections, use profile corrections for my lens, I can go ahead and check those on here. I can get back and do things in case I screwed something up. Or if I wanted to come into my color mixer here, and I've made some adjustments. I didn't tell you that when I was in Lightroom. I did do some color mixer adjustments here. But if I thought, you know what? I would like to have my add a little more saturation to my oranges and maybe lighten up my oranges a little bit with this luminance slider here. Okay, maybe something like that. And I say, yeah, that looks better. Now, what I'll do is click OK. Now, watch what happens when I go back into Photoshop. It goes ahead and fires uh, Denoise AI back up, applies the noise reduction to that new, newly updated uh, smart object. In other words, I updated the raw file, and now it has to add that noise reduction back on to the new update, which proves my point really that this is that the uh, what's going into Topaz Denoise AI is not a raw file. Now let's go ahead and zoom into the image and see what kind of result we have on our noise reduction and sharpening. So if we come here to the smart filter and click right here, this eye, we can see the before and you can see the noise and the sharpness of the image and now we can see the after when I click here again and we can see we've done a really good job and this is relatively sharp but I might be able to get a little bit more sharpness out of here so let's go ahead and use uh, Sharpen AI to do that. Now if you only own Sharpen AI uh, with the image of ISO 2000 you could get away with just doing this all with Sharpen AI but I own both products so I'm going to use Denoise first and then secondly, I'll send it into Topaz Sharpen AI just to add a little extra sharpness. And the sharpness I'm referring to is the actual capture sharpness. In other words, whenever you use a, a raw file, your images always come in to your editing software a little on the soft side. So now we have to bring that sharpness back. And that's what I'm using Sharpen AI for. So let's go ahead and come up to Filter and find uh, Topaz Labs Sharpen AI and we'll launch that and I will give this a little extra sharpness. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. Right now we're zoomed into 100%. I'm going to zoom into 200% and I really want to look at the B because to me he's kind of like my little friend, the little star of the show here. And this image looks, as you can see here, 200%. It is relatively sharp. And so what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to put it in the too soft mode and I'm in the auto setting. I don't need any suppressed noise because it's already had its noise reduced. So I'm going to pull this off. But I think what I'll do is just take this remove blur and move it up a little bit more. Just to add a little, even more than that, just to add just that little extra sharp. Yeah, look at that. That looks looking really good. No noise. It looks great because it's already been denoised. Now all I need to do is click apply. That'll send me back into Photoshop. Now remember, that is a smart filter. Now I have two smart filters. I have Sharpen AI and Denoise AI. Now, if I need to go back and do some tweaking on the raw file, we can do that. But before we do that, let's zoom in just even more here. And let's take a look at the overall before and after. So if I click this eye, we'll see the before. You can see the noise and the sharpness level of the image. And here's the after. So we've done a really good job here. Let me zoom back out. Now, if I feel I still need to go back and alter my adjustments in camera raw, not saying I do, but I'm just saying this is a scenario so you can see how this all works. So let me go ahead and double click the smart object and let's open up camera raw again. This is not the camera raw filter. This is actually camera raw and we're working on a raw file right here. And if I zoom in, you can see it's got all its noise on it, right? Okay, so this is the actual raw file itself. So I may say, well, I'm going to come up to the basic 
panel and uh, let's give it a little more um, exposures. Maybe I felt like my exposure was not quite where I needed it to be, so I increased the exposure. Now I'm going to click OK and watch what happens inside of Photoshop once we go back into Photoshop. It's going to evoke the uh, Topaz Denoise AI filter first, and you can see it just processes it with the settings I originally set it up as. It goes ahead and adds the noise reduction, and now it's going to go ahead and fire back up Sharpen AI and add my sharpening adjustment back onto it. And then it'll bring us right back into Photoshop. So now my image is lighter, and now and it has my noise reduction and my extra sharpening on it. And now the fact that uh, Sharpen AI and Denoise AI are smart filters, I can double click on these and go and do some readjustments if I felt I needed to in either one of those two pieces of software. So that's another great feature of the uh, fact that they are smart filters. And again, the reason I changed my workflow is because, you know, sometimes, especially now that I'm getting the hang of working with linear profiles, and I'm really loving the results I'm getting. Sometimes I need to go back and retweak the uh, raw file a little bit. And to me, doing uh, my workflow this way is a lot better for me. It saves me a lot of time and aggravation. I think it makes sense. Now, at this point, I'm still at the beginning phases of my editing process here. I've started out in Lightroom. I've come into Photoshop. I've added noise reduction and sharpening. And now I can go ahead and add, you know, like adjustment layers, do whatever I want. I can work with uh, the TK7 Go panel, work with Luminosity Mask. I can send this into Topaz Studio, Luminar, whatever I want to do. But I have a good starting point. But let's say at this point, I'm going to quit working on my image for now. I'm going to come back to it later. So what I can do is I can come up to File, and click save or I could do command S or control S and now my image will be saved with all of its layers intact now I can go ahead and close this by clicking this X here and now that's gone so the next time I come back into Lightroom there's my image now if I want to start working on it again all I need to do is right click now I'll go to edit in but this time I'll say edit in Photoshop but what you want to do is edit the original. This is very important or you won't see the layers that you have already created in Photoshop. So now go ahead and simply click edit. And now we are back into Photoshop and you can see here's all my layers. Here's my smart object with my raw file embedded inside it. Well, there it is. That's my new Lightroom Topaz Denoise AI sharpen ai workflow i hope you enjoyed this one today if you did please give it a like share it with your friends if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel please subscribe click that bell notification icon then every time i upload a new tutorial you'll be notified about it i want to thank each and every one of you today for joining me in the joy of editing with dave kelly i'll see you all right here next time but until then happy editing